The latest bastards go to the movies, live from the Carolina Cinemas Asheville, with Ken Hankey and Justin Souther, cohered and produced by Shanghai Steve Shannafelt. Right, right, who are you? Uh, I'm Jeremy Dillon, I'm from, uh, um, not New Zealand, Australia. Same difference. Is, is that the one, is that the one where they put the queen on the money? It's one of the ones where they put the queen on the money. I used to have a big penny that had a picture of the queen on one side and a kangaroo on the other. I had one of those too. I don't know if it was a penny though. It was a, it was a, it was a penny. I'm pretty sure we don't have pennies anymore in Australia. Well, I can't help that. I, I may still have this somewhere. Yeah, Maybe I'm going to pick. It was really old. I think it had a picture of Queen Victoria on it. Right. Okay. Maybe the Canada of the Southern Hemisphere. Because Canada no longer has pennies. Good on them. I think once you get to the point where something costs more to produce than it's actually worth, there's some kind of logical in some inconsistency in keeping it around. We're all about not You're talking being about logical. This place? Or this or production? I mean, of course we don't <laughs> wow, that worked it's on a, two levels. I like it's that. It's a metaphor for the entire podcast. <laughs> it's a metaphor for the entire world. And we should note that as of the old podcasts, of course, you know, we were being paid to, pre- or I was being paid to produce, kind of. And nobody here, we're all volunteer. This is, this is an act of passion. Wait, wait, sorry. What? You're getting food, remember? I, 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 um, yeah, guys, I think I might have to leave early. Mm. We so, programmed this motherfucking movie for you. You're going to have to stay for that, so regardless. What's, what's the movie tonight? H- H- Hannah, Hannah and her sisters. So just to, for context, tonight is the Asheville Film Society screening, which you guys do here at the Carolina Asheville, uh, in Asheville, Tuesday, North Carolina, every Tuesday. Tuesday. So if you, if you live as far away as Australia, you're welcome to come. That's right. Ben. No we'll further. Be. If you live in Hong Kong, don't bother. Yeah, you're screwed. And New Zealand is dicey. It is. I, that's true. New Zealand is dicey. Steve loves Asians. For the record, I don't want people listening in Hong Kong. He reads enough <laughs> comic books to where we know. I thought he'd given up comic books. I did. I just haven't given up Asians. I'm saying, well, yeah, yeah. That was really funny, though. It didn't go anywhere, but I really, I could have, if I'd been able to do anything with that, I would have, man. I just, yeah, I'm sure. Well, the point I'm trying to make is. That's what you said about the last Asian you saw, too. <laughs> that every nerd I've ever known has had a thing for Asians. Where's he? Exactly. Okay. Yeah, I'm not, it's not really my thing. I mean, they're fine. I, I'm not, I don't have the yellow fever, as they call it. Did you know at one point it. in your life? No. no. No, I knew actual Asians, and so the romance was kind of lost. You, you're like, well, this is kind of hard to romanticize when, like, they're just people that you're, not, you're angry with so many Asians right now. <laughs> Why did Once you, you get disappoint? to know them? <laughs> you're not interesting anymore. The exoticism I don't know is, is all going. rubbed this is off. going somewhere that's... So, Hannah and her sisters, in your review, you said that it may not be the best Woody of Woody Allen's films. married to an Asian. That's young right. Young Asian lady. That's right. He is. Very controversially. Yes, because it's one of those children that his ex-wife adopted. I had a, a thought the other day. Or collected. Wondering, and I don't, I don't know if there's any way to quantify this. I was, I was wondering if who has made more great art people with bizarre sexual, not even bizarre, out of the mainstream sexual proclivities or drug addicts? I think the former probably wins because it's not as debilitating as a rule, as a rule. But it's something to look into. Final stage of syphilis, you know, that's a downside, but yeah. I I mean, you don't always get syphilis, I mean. No, I realize that. Roman Polanski. What about it? How do you well, know he he's never had syphilis? Well, that's true. He doesn't seem to... He seems to be healthy. I've never had days. syphilis. Are we saying you're a great artist? No. I mean, you can say that if you want. I'm kind of a tramp, or I have been. <laughs> but I think we can all agree that if you are a sexually deviant drug addict, the odds of you creating great art are right. really astronomical. And there's also a lot of sexual deviants we don't know are... They're just sneakier. Well, yeah, but you have to also remember, I mean, it's, it's kind of like what, what, what Steve's on about there is it's like the old James Baldwin thing where 
I think it was Dick Cavett asked him if he thought it was a great drawback because he was black, poor, and gay. And he said no, he thought he'd hit the jackpot. Right. I mean, how much more outre could you be? So you're saying that if you're, you're just some boring old fart that you're not going to make anything great. I think we can agree on that. I think that's probably true. I think I don't think anybody's going to wrestle you to the floor over that one. You going to wrestle him? No, I'm, What's the my greatest, wrestling days are over. What's the greatest thing made by a boring person? X-Men 3, Brett Ratner. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think Tower Heist that's actually like a, is better. That's more than like a boring <laughs> frat boy. Uh, he probably has some weird sexual stuff going on. I mean, well, he according to Olivia Munn, I don't know if you read that yes. whole thing. Ooh, oh. Yes, good lord. I don't think Ken's in on this. I forget even what. I have no idea who Olivia Munn is, so I'm. She's I, been in some movies. She's um, in the new Aaron Sorkin show, actually. The new the the newsroom, which starts in a few weeks on HBO. She's most famous for being the female anchor on Attack of the Show, which is a nerd-oriented show. It's actually really fun. She's more famous now for having her phone hacked yeah. and all of her <clears throat> dirty photos taken off of it. Oh, so, okay. She's dating the dude from. Yeah, like Star Trek, right? Brett Ratner, please. Well, no. yeah. Shatner. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, she dated. What, it, what it? was it? She dated Chris Pine, right? Well, but she had dated Brett Ratner. Brett Ratner went on TV around the. His, his, people had forgotten about Brett Ratner, and then he got hired to direct the, the Oscars, and then made an ass out of himself within Again. about a month. This was part of it. Was discussing yeah, well. her sexually their intimate well, in, nature. in her autobiography she mentions meeting this I haven't read the autobiography oh, the, but this, this woman happened. has written an autobiography apparently it wasn't very good but and yeah. then I shook I mean what is it you know she can't be more than what 28 and she you can't, if that yeah why would you write an autobiography because there's money in it I mean why, arrogance what else do you do when you're I mean it's not like she's famous for acting although but anyways apparently she walked in in a room and he just told it like when when they first met and he was just he just started masturbating like she was at some trailer to interview him or something like I think I think this was she was working at, on Attack of the Show I think I knew him one time right. <laughs> so I knew anyway, someone rather liked that so, so it's also possible that you can be a pervert and not make great art clearly so what we've gotten to is that sometimes you're a weirdo and talented and sometimes you're a weirdo and you're, you're not just talented. an ass. That's true. So. Well, who's the most normal seeming director type person you Spielberg? can think? Spielberg. Well, he's the. I bet he's. We've not had that this talk normal. before where you, he's the least sexual director. Him Next and, to Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah. right. Which Burton is, is the is the most sexless director on the planet, I think. Well, he's what? certainly not the most normal seeming. Yeah, I I, what makes you say that? I think this it, is a man who can make a movie about a man who dresses in women's clothes and the entire film is completely unerotic. Yeah, but he also made Edward Scissorhands, which fetishized, it's like... It's not make, erotic, though. It is... It's I know plenty of women. I know, I know plenty of women who disagree with you. Well, I can't help you that... That, that may be that the Johnny Depp factor. Who have, <laughs> yeah. That there are women who have some bizarre fantasies. So maybe it's Johnny Depp that brings what sexuality there is to a Tim Burton Well, film. that brings what sexuality it is these women are reading out of it. The only film of his that has any sexual content at all that isn't on a junior high school level is Big Fish. Well, there's a, a scene in Mars Attacks, right? Yeah, which is, is horny Martians steaming up their helmets watching some people hump. You know, and that, that to me is like, the, that's the essence of where Burton's sexual fantasies lie. They are, have not progressed beyond that stage. The, the Big Fish may come down more to John August rather than Tim Burton. He wrote the screenplay. Yes, I know. This is a discussion for another time. We're not gonna yes, we not argue, argue about that. Because right right. we're getting way off topic from the non agenda. Yeah, well, we have. well, I can see well, this. I've seen and these I two are argue not going about to the, uh, <laughs> yes. the the uh, downside of his un his his inability to understand the auteur theory. Oh Christ! This is why we'll save this for another time. Okay. All right. Next time Jeremy's here. Next time he's here, we'll go. Ten rounds. Okay, ten on rounds. Why this altruism. worship that you have for writers is just beyond <laughs> it, the pale. Is inferior to your worship for directors. Yes, it is actually. Okay. Anyway, back to perverts. 
You know, actually, what I was, the, the main thing I was cheesed about today that I was going to vent about were these goddamn fanboys that have attacked everybody who has written a bad review of the Avengers. Well, how are you surprised at that? I We've am had not a surprised by it, but what I do not understand is what is this mania? Oh, I ruined our 100%. Who cares? Why do they virgins. care? Virgins, virgins care about apparently that. Apparently, these people have never been laid or gotten out of their mother's basements. I don't know. I mean, here's the thing. I saw Whit Stillman's Damsels in Distress this past weekend. Uh -huh. I absolutely adored it. It's got a 74% approval rating. I don't give a shit. I, I think there's a 75% a, a chance that, no, I'd say there's an 85% chance that Justin will like it. But if he doesn't like it, I'm not going to never speak to him again. I'll just look dirty at him and say, well, now you've been He'll wrong twice. He'll dismiss my opinion. But he will, he'll still talk to me. Yes, I won't respect his opinion in this matter, yeah. but I will, I will talk to him and I will not say bad things about him. I mean, I've only ever seriously known him well, to be wrong. He's not specifically over that. No. Well, here's the, here's uh, but I've only specifically ever known him to be wrong about one movie. Which is? Oh, you don't want to go there because you and I will have to attack him. I'll, I'll take your side, Justin. I don't, which one is it? It's Casino Royale, right? Yeah, the 1957 hey. Casino Royale. Yeah. I know, I don't, I just don't, it doesn't work for me. I'm with you on that one, and that's not even me playing. It's goofy. And that's a bad thing? No, that's but it's the a, whole it's, point. It's, yeah. It takes the stupid James Bond series. Now, this is where Jeremy and I disagree, because he thinks the James Bond series has some kind of merit. It, to me, it puts the James Bond series right where it belongs. Do you know who's making the next James Bond movie? I know it's somebody in, in depressing. It's Sam Mendes, who wants to get to the dark side of James Bond, which is no. maybe the most boring you sounding you a, movie. You okay. a James Bond movie with all when, the Where are you getting that from? Because oh, no, from all that I've heard, he wants to go back to the Goldfinger um, on a Majesty's Secret Have you ever seen a Sam Mendes movie? Yeah. He's going to suck all the air out of Bond is what he's going to do. I don't believe so. Roger Deakins is doing the cinematography. That I should don't get care. You inside. It's not going to change the fact that this is the man who made American Beauty, which is a piece of garbage. I love that. The man who made Ooh, wow. Revolutionary wow, that's Road, a brave which is a statement. piece of garbage. I haven't seen that. The man who made, what was that? Road uh, to Perdition? I don't know if I would call Road it Road to Perdition is not bad. Garbage, I like Road but to Perdition a lot. It doesn't work for me either. What's that? It's sort of American Beauty. I wouldn't call it awful, but it's also I'd just call sort it of awful. like, I haven't seen but it in a while. But then again, almost anything with Kevin Spacey in it, I'm ready to call awful. Well, the long knives are out. You wanted it. You got it. <laughs> That's not a long knife. This is a long knife. <laughs> is that a setup? Here, here I was. No, I wish it was. Do you have any idea how much I wish that was a setup? No, that was that was totally a rebound by Mr. Dillon over here. It was brilliant. He's been saving that his entire I, trip here. His yeah, entire sure. life. He goes to Waffle House and they <laughs> ask for a knife. <laughs> you pulled it there too, huh? I hope so. I would get the good out of it. So back to Hannah and her sisters. <laughs> oh, right. Were we talking about that? <coughs> Why do you like this movie? I, I saw it years ago. I don't really remember much about it. But I, as you know, I'm kind of a big one about it. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, that's that really... doesn't need a whole lot more than that. I mean, there are people who say it's his best film, and it seems to be, the tendency seems to be going in that direction. I personally prefer Manhattan and Stardust Memories just off the top of my head, but we've already shown those, so he was SOL. Um, my biggest complaint with it <clears throat> is I'm going to knock a, a point off for making me sit through Bobby Short crucifying a Cole Porter song. I mean, yeah, that's it, you know, right there. I, th mm -hmm. If I even have to listen to Bobby Short, that's, that's, that's definitely not a good thing. When I, when I edited your review, I had I to look up who Bobby Short was. I was like, what, who? And apparently he's not, apparently you're not alone in disliking Bobby Short, although... I, I've heard him called an acquired taste. Um, like snuff. <laughs> or Ersters. <laughs> yeah, I, I always... I, I, <clears throat> one, one of my two favorite Ken Russellisms is... Well, my top favorite is about Christian Bale's Batman. But my, my other favorite is, I had an oyster in 1955 and I haven't gotten over it yet. He said that in 2009. <laughs> you know, there's a new... Batman trailer. Just, also brings me just to, slap me around now. I don't want to talk about, well I kind of want to talk about the Batman trailer, I want to talk about there's a new Prometheus trailer, which people are always like, oh it's full of spoilers. Which, 
instinctively. What it has something you, to do with, with the Alien series, and it was made by Ridley Scott. What one do you want? Well, if you haven't seen the movie, how do you know it's, it's spoiled? Full well, you don't. There's things in it, and then so you assume that you know. Well, so what I don't understand is they. Be they, fair though, it's Ridley Scott. You know where it's going anyway. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, mean, I mean, like you're. There's not gonna be any. I guarantee you, the best thing about those movies is gonna be the trailers. Trick. Like, but it's kind of like, you know, but, th- but they'll yell spoiler about anything. It's like, any critic who mentioned a certain person who shows up in the last few minutes of Cabin in the Woods right. got crucified for spoilers. It's on the goddamn IMDb page. Right. She's in the cast list on there. Yeah. Well, Ooh, I mean... I just spoiled something. I, I revealed the gender of this special guest. Did we talk about this last week that... Philosophically, if you can spoil a movie with that t- tiny well, amount of information is, is, that the yeah, movie's well, not the, worth the you watching. The whole thing is if the movie is only good for the f- surprises that it inflicts on you, it's not really right. much of a movie. I would, well, well, that's true, but that I don't think that negates spoiling. A f- uh, spoilers for a film do diminish the first experience. That first experience of watching a film is unique precisely because you don't know where it's going. But you see, this is a personal thing, I admit. But generally speaking, I would like to have the first viewing out of the way. I have almost never seen a film that was of any substance that I didn't like much better the second time I saw it. Because I'm not concerned about where the plot's going. I'm not concerned with how long it's going to take to get there. Now... I can draw this back into something earlier. Watch this. Do you think that's because he likes writers more than you? Oh, I saw what you did there. That yeah, was yeah. good. Could wow. be. Could be. Jeremy. Well, think? we've had this argument before, and maybe we will argue about this. So we have not had this argument. We've had the writer argument. We're not arguing. Well, We're discussing. But this is, I think it'll it's turn into argument. The whether you're you, a slap fight. Whether your <laughs> primary. Um, the primary thing you draw from whether you see film as primarily a storytelling medium or not. Yes, but you do. That's because you watch all that crap on television, which that's what it is, is a storytelling medium on television. It certainly isn't a visual medium. Well, that's you, you say that, but it's a bit hard to take you seriously because you don't watch television. I've seen enough. When have you seen enough from? Oh, I did follow American Horror Story last year. I haven't seen that. Yeah, well. Is that the, that's the Ryan Murphy show? Yeah. The first episode was not bad. It went downhill real fast. But it wasn't particularly cinematic. Okay, well... And I Ryan would... Murphy's films have been fairly cinematic. Okay. It, it, you know, granted, that Eat, Pray, Love movie was a piece of crap, but that you can only do so much with Julia, Mer- or Julia Roberts and an elephant. I think you differ. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> your erotic fantasies don't enter into this. And so we're back to purpose now. Yeah. So clearly, I'm a genius. Wow. I'm glad we, I'm glad we came to this logical conclusion. I've known you too well, long to we, buy this. Can we talk about television for a minute? Because I'm, sure. I'm sort of in the same boat as Ken. As I've tried. My wife loves television. I can't get into it because I need to know where things are going, which is also a reason I don't... One of the reasons I don't like Casino Royale is because I need, like, a direction. And with television so no, that makes often, no sense. That makes no sense whatsoever because... The first time I watched it. Okay, okay, but it's okay. Here's the thing, though. Okay. You gonna tell me you had any idea where the Magic Christian was going first time you watched it? It's so much shorter, though. No, well, not Python really. And the Holy Grail. Minutes. I don't know. It's so much. There's a lot of digression in Casino Royale that. Yeah, but the Magic care. Christian is one long digression. But it's a much shorter long digression. Also 99 minutes point. versus 131, you know. I also well, it makes a difference. Granted, I've only seen The Magic Christian once, but and it was fine. I didn't. I don't have the love for it that you guys have. Yeah, well, it's not your, no. it's, it's not your shtick. I could have told you that. But I actually am less bothered by that than I was by Casino Royale because at least I knew they were just like, this is just fucking weird. We're just gonna be weird for however long the movie is. Was it 90 minutes, something like that? Like, it's not. And I'm not saying I'll never like Casino Royale. It might happen one day. I've given it two shots so To far. me, it's like, there's, what's not to like? I fell in love with this movie when I first saw it in 1967. My parents hated it. I like I mean, it better than I liked Austin Powers. I liked it better than the, yeah. the, the new Casino Royale. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Now, Jeremy will not agree with you there. 
Oh, uh, I don't know. I mean, although I did, I did like the Martin Campbell Casino Royale quite a lot, but I wouldn't necessarily say I liked it. I any tried to watch it a second time. That was not happening. Mm. I wouldn't say <laughs> I necessarily liked it significantly more or less than the um, Woody Allen Casino Royale or the David Niven Casino Royale or however we want to label it. The because it's got about seven directors and fifteen screenwriters and a cast of thousands and a completely uncredited director on the climactic section. It is the most magnificent reputation of the auteur theory out there. It is a film that should under no circumstance work and somehow it does. Yes, that's that's very true. Yeah, I, I think I'm, I'm with you for the first part, the first clause. I don't think it does. It's okay. But it's just, it's too weird. And, and it's not even weird. I, I, that's you a bad say, word. Yeah, you keep saying weird like it's there's something weird. wrong No, with it's that. not that it's weird. I like weird. It's that it's just like, for me, when I watch a movie, I want to know that I'm being told this for a reason. Like, why was this worth all this money and my time? You can spend all the money you want to. but because like it made a shitload of money. That's why. It was the second most popular film of 1967. Believe it or not. I believe it. But, I, but they also threw everything they had at the screen. But I was like, Which okay, is wonderful. Well, that's fine. But it's then, overkill. Well, it is such glorious overkill. But you see, that's it's hard to make. That's an easy argument to make when it works. But most of the time, that strategy for filmmaking doesn't bear no, the same. No, most of the time, time it does not. Not like I don't normally like things that. Yeah, I've never compl- I, 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 I will probably never completely understand why you don't like this. I, I, I don't know if I completely understand. I, I, think, so. I think one of the things, though, that you have to, that has to be in, ta- in place here, and it might not be for you, I don't know if it is for you, and that is that you're absolutely in love with the musical score. Every aspect of it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I think the score for Casino Royale is great. One of the, I mean, if we're going to think of it as part of the Bond series, it's not one of the best scores of the entire run. That. Well, I think it's one of the best scores. Yeah. Doesn't have to be on a Bond film. I think it's just one of the best scores. Yeah, yeah I, w- I would, I would agree with that. So Hannah and her sisters. <laughs> let's talk about that for a minute. Well, or let's talk about, about television. Oh, I was talking uh, about television. Okay. Do you have a greater point to make with that? Because I'd like to hear it. Um, so. Let me remember if I have a greater point. No, just you I have, have to, to know feel where like, it's going, yeah. and it has to be something that involves like, closure. Yeah. Right. So. There's so many shows that get canceled before they, and there's so many shows that if end they before ever they. We're going to have a closure, right? You like The Wire, right, Jeremy? Yeah, I actually just recently watched all five seasons of The Wire in the right. space of a fortnight. I watched all of those, not, but not as television entertainment, which I think is a mistake a lot of people make. But that's you can go read David Simon's blog if you want to get into that, but. That I knew had a beginning, a middle, an end. It was going somewhere the entire time, and I was fine with that. There's stuff like I'm not going to start watching American Horror Story till I know it's well. American I, Horror Story, last more it, than it, for, for as much as I say it went downhill, uh-huh. had the good sense to be six episodes long, right. and the new season will be a brand new story. Right, and I think that's wise. There's so little like. However, it didn't work so well for the Halloween series. No. Well, there's. I watched the first season of Lost, oh, oh dear. and oh. got to the end of that, and I was like, "Wait a second! They don't have a fucking clue what they're doing." And, and you are absolutely correct. Did you and get to the end of it? No. It, no, I stopped after the first season, and yeah. I sort of like vaguely, occasionally entire, kept track of what the entire time. The entire time, they're like, "No, this is totally going somewhere. It's gonna have." And you get to the end, of it and you're like, "That was it. Right. That's what you spent all this time telling." And it's the exact same problem I have with a lot of the movies we're talking about. It's like, "Why did you tell me this?" My, my it's a, all these things are like long shaggy dog stories and Lost is the king of the terrible right. and even Battlestar Galactica which is a show I really like has that same element at the end of it because you're like what, what, what was that like uh, this is where you were going right. really my thing with Lost is I signed up for it thinking I was going to get the straight version of Gilligan's Island <laughs> which I thought yeah that sounds like a really uh, interesting concept for a show and then so, and then there was like polar Did it have bears a theme song? and a uh, no, they didn't really have a theme song. No, well, that was a mistake right there. Okay. You know, what I would have really liked was, apparently the original idea was they're going to kill uh, the Jack, the yep. lead character, off in the pilot, and he's going to be played by Michael Keaton. And great. That way then I could have just watched the pilot and stopped <laughs> watching after that. Because there was this great article in The Onion a couple of years ago, and the headline was, um, study shows that 86% of all films would be in- improved by the addition of Michael Keaton. 
and I can't disagree with that. You know, well, that Justin has a slightly well, that, different I think theory. Though, I, well, multiplicity, I think, ruins that. Well, Maybe no, if you get I, too much. No, I wasn't, wasn't talking about Michael Keaton. Justin has a, a, a different theory about what would improve all movies. Does it involve well, simians? No, that's no, mine. No, that's his. I, what, if Cronenberg made yes. them? Yes. Yeah. He thinks all movies, all, all cinema would be better if Cronenberg made everything. David Cronenberg's Tommy? It'd be different. I don't know. There's some things you can't, but Forrest Gump. <laughs> yeah, that would well, definitely be an improvement. <laughs> Yui Bowl would be an improvement well, on that. Let's see. Um, well, Eat, Pray, Love would be better. <laughs> Actually, yes. Yes, it would, yes. And then we would get when, to see when Titanic. Julia, when Julia Roberts turns into an elephant. Right. Titanic would be better. Or grows a trunk. Talking about body horror. <laughs> well, Titanic would definitely be better by David Cronenberg. No, my my theory is, is is much simpler than that. Is that all movies should end with a monkey stampede and a musical number? If you could combine the two, yeah, maybe a monkey stampede musical number. Well, well the monkeys could stampede the musical number. You, you got to get some really, monkey really. stampede sound effects and a musical number to end this podcast. I mean, just think about this for a minute, though. Just imagine, imagine, if you will, how much more satisfying it would be if in the middle of, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, they were all trampled <laughs> by monkeys. Yes! Think about See, it. I've seen that, and it, it just ends up being that horrible Indiana Jones movie. No. There's a monkey stampede in that. No, I, it's not a real monkey stampede. stampede. Your theory has been tested, and I think it comes There's up lacking. A, a monkey. Whoa, no, that is not a monkey no, no, stampede. No, no. And it's his, not theory, of, his theory is would improve. <laughs> so you could say without the monkey stampede, the film would be worse. <laughs> That's true. The film would be worse without the monkey stampede. Simeon Value did give it a little bit of an edge. I think that... that uh, however, I think Steve is in, in the right age group and in the right mindset that I can almost guarantee you that Indiana Jones and the incredibly overlong title did something horrible to his childhood. Are you one of those? Um, which one? The last one. Kingdom you one of those the, George Lucas? The one nobody can remember the title to. Yeah, yeah. It's Indiana Kingdom of the Jones Christmas and the Fountain of I, I really only like the first one. I mean, Temple of Doom is okay, I guess. And I forget everything I ever. I forget the last Crusade except for like one scene. Oh, that's great, Sean Connery. Yeah, exactly. I think that's actually the only one where it's just like we named the dog Indiana and that's it. That's all I've got. That's, I love that because one of the things, great things about that is Sean Connery plays Harrison Ford's father and he's about eight years older than him. <laughs> so that would have been an interesting <laughs> conception. Well, you know. So and Margaret played Roger Daltrey's mother. That's true. And there's like a two age, two there, year age difference or something. There's um, no scene of Sean Connery rolling around in baked beans. <laughs> More than pity. That would definitely improve that film. So baked beans rolling might also be would a improve good. Yes. An Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> Monkeys, m- monkey stampede over a, um, in a vat of baked beans. Now, a now here's, here's the thing. In the now, now, here's my feeling about Temple. Woody of, Allen Temple, shows up at the end. Let's, 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 let's go back to Temple of Dumb for a second. Wait, what if Woody Allen was a Nazi at the end of an Indiana Jones movie? Oh, oh my, my favorite. God. My favorite. Brilliant. We've been uh, uh, on the road trip down from Nashville the other day. My Smell producer definitely. and I were listening to um, we're, we're listening to the Woody Allen stand-up box set, and one of the, my favorite lines in there: "My wife and I were, were married by a, a reform rabbi, a very reform rabbi. He was a Nazi." I can go along with that, okay. But now, wait a minute. Let's, let's go back to the Temple of Dumb just for a second here, okay? Now. I do remember Short Round and the thing with okay. the Asian snake. Here's the thing. If you thing. see that movie when you're like seven years old, it's pretty great because... Yeah. No, no, now listen to me. And I did, actually. Yeah. It so. starts out with Kate Capshaw singing Anything Goes in Chinese. Now, that's pretty darn good. That's brilliant. The first whole section of that film is fine. The, that first sequence is beautifully done. Sure. I think anybody then Short Round movie. shows up, and that's where the monkey stampede comes in. <laughs> If the monkeys had stampeded short round. Mm-hmm. Now it does have monkey brains. It would have it improved does. the. Yes, but that's grotesque. Which I read about. They, You know who did monkey brains before that? Mm. The Faces of Death? Uh, there was I, a monkey yeah, brain. No, 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 no. Something I ran that's to a, drive in predated oh, really? that. Oh, okay. well, I think it was called The Man from Snowy River or something. Well, it Faces was really of Death. awful. With Tom Burlinson. It was something that was out by 1974 because that was my drive-in period. Well, Faces of Death tries to claim monkey brains. You might want to... 
No, oh, Faces of Death is crap. Well, I know. But okay. Tom Berlinson, who played the man from something. Snow River, um, now too is doing a Frank Sinatra tribute show. He does the voice quite well. Wow. That's just downright weird, that is. So you wanted to talk about a movie trailer. I think we should talk about that. Oh, you already did. Oh, no, yeah. I'm already... We'll pass that, Steve. I'm, I'm sorry. Up. I jumped back in time. You did. Sorry, Hannah and out. her sisters. That's the one. Hannah you and her sisters. You talk about this movie. I've I don't never know seen why. a trailer for Hannah. Hey, here's the thing. No, I mean, I have, we actually, can talk yeah. about Hannah and her sisters all you want. I, that's fine. I have no problem Who with Who do you that. like better, Hannah or her sisters? How about all three of them at once? No. No, Mia Farrow. Well, this movie has... And an elephant and Julia Roberts. There you go. I'd I pay money to watch this. Steve's getting excited. Um, I'm just trying to decide whether or not that's a mark of, of genius. One of favorite moments is in that Omen remake where Mia Farrow gets hit by a car. No, she gets kicked in the face. Oh, yeah, is that what it is? The, yeah. Then she gets hit by a car. Then she gets hit by a car, yeah. It's like the end, the end of... But yeah, at the same time, I, the I really like her. With O.J. Simpson. <laughs> but I, I really like her in Be Kind Rewind. Oh, yeah, she is in that. Yeah. Can have some opinions on Mia Farrow if you want to do a whole show on that sometime? No, not particularly. I mean, okay. One of my favorite... I, just wanted, I know all of Ken's good good material, so I don't, I don't want to use it all. I feel like we should, we'd be remiss if we didn't at least address the other special screening that you guys have going on soon, which is, of course, the Friday the 13th Part... Or Jason Lives? Jason... Well, it depends. If you would... If you take IMDb the said it was credits, different. Okay. The opening credits are Jason Lives, Friday the 13th Part 6. The closing credits are Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Take your pick. It's like John Carter or yeah. John Carter of Mars in the end. Yeah, exactly. Credits. I myself always go with the opening credit as being the official title. Mm. Which where you and I have had some IMDB differences. Yes. Yes. You have to strive for consistency. So this when whole I show, use the, the undertones of the show is Ken's conflicts with everybody That's true. that he knows. <laughs> I haven't really had any conflict with you except your the fact yeah, you were wrong about Casino yeah. Royale. You hate Jeremy's opinions on directors. No, Steve's an ass. Most, it's mostly yeah, well, yeah, yeah, best we know that. That's not. I don't hate Jeremy's opinions. I just belittle them. <laughs> There's a difference. He places far too much interest in writers, and very little interest in overused machete men with hockey masks. That's true. So let's talk about that film because when he wrote that movie, I have no idea. I'm not even real it. sure who directed it. <laughs> It's like the only thing he ever did that wasn't a TV movie. Yeah. But I think the surprising thing is that I, I don't think a lot of people would look at... I mean, because the whole idea behind the Thursday Horror Picture Show, have, which is held here at the Carolina Asheville on Thursdays. <coughs> at 8 anyway. o'clock. Um, it's, it's on Thursdays, which is that's amazing because, of the, you know, the, the name would not lead you to suspect that at all, would it? It's, such a, it's a great coincidence. It is. It's, I don't know how it happens either. But the great thing about it is that usually you're showcasing either forgotten works of horror or underrated works of horror or classic works of horror. And I think very few people would think of any of the Friday the 13th movies, period, as being, well, as being, as being truly great films or even great oh God, horror no, films. I would not think so, but at the same time, when they try to reboot the series as they do now... And specifically, Cabin in the Woods is, is something that we had a long discussion about the other day. Yes, well, we rebooted Two weeks right ago. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Shh, it was last week. Anyway, yeah. It was only went up. It was, it was last week on internet time. Wait, I'm trying, trying to shame Steve and not, not recording us last week. Yeah, well, that was kind of by mutual consent. But it wasn't his fault that the. It wasn't really his fault, though, that the. I forget peerless, what excuse I used. The peerless. Flawless, incredibly wonderful <laughs> right, express site crashed for a day and a half. It's a miracle that thing. It's it's really, it's literally duct taped together. I mean, like there's literally. It, it kind of is. Like what was has to do what, with chicken wire and? What know, was wrong with the old one? Failing. Yeah. It's li it's pretty much like we just have like a 45 rpm, you know, like like. Uh, Turntable like running the actual hard drives at this point. It's really with a hamster powering it from so the back of the room. It's great. I love it. So, so Hannah or Assistus? <laughs> well, we were talking about Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. We were. We were talking about Friday. What were we talking about? Uh, Steve is is questioning why uh, this is in a series of movies that usually showcases decent films. Not always. Not always. Steve doesn't come. 
to these. It's well, like, <laughs> but some of them, some also, I think, these, are, these are a finite amount of really good horror movies. Right. That's true. And we've been doing this for two years, so we're bound to. Start. We've had the occasion. I don't want to say we're scraping the barrel, but out of we still haven't shown the original Mummy. We've still got that to, you know, tide us over. Um. Well, when they did, when they rebooted this thing, we can get back to that. You would be surprised, if not horrified, to notice the number of people who refer to the original 1980 classic. Well, in a sense, it's remembered, so I guess it's... Well, yeah, I mean... Well, Bacon's in it, spin, so I mean, you know... Spin, you know a real actor Bing Crosby's in it son is in it, too. Of, the, of that genre, it's... Bill? Or... Hmm? It's, 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 you know, it's, it's probably the best movie Betsy Palmer was ever in. You'll see somebody refute that. Or but acknowledge it. that subgenre <laughs> of supernatural slasher, you know, a hoof teenager. Yes, but it was, it did, but at the same time, it was not really that genre. It doesn't become that genre till the second movie. So oh. that first one was 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 a who done it, right? With a lot of point of view camera work, so that you couldn't tell who was doning it. Which people like Siskel and Ebert went off on a tear, talking about oh it just shows how depraved we have become that the teenagers who watch this stuff want to be in the position of the killer. This is a terrible thing. No, no, it was to keep you from knowing who the killer was. Jesus Christ, get a grip. was his mother the spoiler you just ruined this I movie know. for generations of 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 Betsy Palmer fans or is it Bess Meyerson but if Jason is alive then doesn't that ruin the entire motivation of his mom in the first movie but he's not alive there is nothing in the first movie to suggest that Jason is alive no no I know but so then how does he come back in the second I never saw the second movie I saw I because should watch the second one just doesn't make any doesn't care well that's convenient it's like yeah. all the Frankenstein movies yeah, you know, the, the, and, and the, the third, yeah, yeah. and the, the third one, it mainly exists because it was in 3D. Could you resist making Friday the 13th 3D? No, you could not. And the fourth one, which was called the final chapter or something like that, mm -hmm. which you lied, uh, decided to actually kill Jason. Mm -hmm. Only somehow or other, there's a copycat Jason, and in the sixth one. Young Tommy Jarvis, who started out being Corey Feldman, is now who's Asian to this person I've never heard of before, or since. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> probably good for him not to be Corey Feldman. That's probably true. Has has well, it could be worse to be Corey Haim. Uh, has, has well, he is dead. Has so has, has but I know busted out of a loony bin, and and feels that he can get satisfaction if he sees Jason's moldering corpse. Corey Feldman busting out of a loony bin. This just is not very Corey implausible. Feldman. This is not Corey fake Feldman. Fake Corey Feldman. This is a fake Corey Feldman. This is Corey Feldman as an adult. Corey a thing Feldman. Conceivable. How's that? Yes, whatever. <laughs> Jeremy's doing this gun shooting thing over here that may, makes me wish I had a camera. That's all. It's good. As long as Jeremy's enjoying himself. Yeah, I think, I think yes. Well, that's, that's fine. I mean, I, 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 I like people to enjoy themselves. You wouldn't, you wouldn't gather that from just sitting here listening to him talk, but he really is a kind soul. He's not kind of determined what kind. Yeah. So, but the thing is, yeah. so in this, in this one, right. is the first time he becomes supernatural. Right. Because he digs him up and there's this moldering corpse in there and he ill-advisedly shoves an iron stake into him, which of course gets hit by lightning, which of course jollies him right up out of the grave. And I'm sure that was very fun for, you know, all future screenwriters were delighted by this because you didn't have to work out any sort of reasoning. You know, he's supernatural. He can survive anything. Um, well, as we know from Jason X, he can survive the end of the planet Earth. Yeah, Jason X is an aberration. It's like the quest. It runs things. Jason. <laughs> it runs Friday the Thirteenth one through nine. No, run through eight. Mm -hmm. Then the tenth one, and then Freddy versus Jason. Mm -hmm. This makes no sense. This is like the Final Cut Pro numbering system. But, but uh, there is one thing in Jason X's favor. Okay. It is self-critiquing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. But well, it has that same. No, 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 Wait. no, no. Okay. You're you're thinking about the the, the overstated postmodern crap in it. Yeah, which I'm thinking I was about. Drive. Okay. 
the immortal line, this sucks on so many levels. It's, it's kind Did, of... Wait, I need to get an opening quote. Can you say that again? <laughs> this sucks on so many levels. It's kind of like that bit in Batman and Robin where um, Bane is driving Uma Thurman around and just keeps saying, bomb, bomb, <laughs> bomb. Yeah, well, that makes sense. So, postmodernism. In uh, Jason 6, or whatever it is we're talking about. Well, yeah, but it, it's not the same. Jason X just beats it over the head. It's, it's fairly... It's limited to a few gags in, in part six. Yes. And they don't... My, my, my favorite one is probably the kids hiding under a bed. And one asking the other one, so what did you want to be when you grew up? You know, stuff like that. And, you know, uh, and, and, and three Alice Cooper songs. How, how far wrong can you go here? Especially when you have an Alice Cooper song that includes Cooper going... Shh, shh, shh. Now... That's prime. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Yeah. Okay, so we are 15 minutes into this. I've got, I've got one Hannah and her sisters thing. Okay, we've, <laughs> we've got to bring it back. Through. All right, bring it back around to Hannah and her sisters. One of my favorite, thing, favorite factoids about that film is um, Michael Caine won the Oscar for it, but he couldn't accept it because he was um, off shooting Jaws for The Revenge, and he got, he got <laughs> asked one time... Um, Mr. Kane, how do you feel about the fact that you couldn't get your Oscar because you was off filming uh, Jaws 4, which was not a very good movie? He said, well, I haven't seen the picture, and by all accounts it's terrible, but I have seen the house it paid for, and that is fantastic. That seems only reasonable to me. Uh, you know, and Michael Kane is known to be in paycheck mode on more than one occasion. But he is a British actor, and British actors have an entirely different take on this than... We think they should. They review acting as a job of work. They do not particularly care whether it is a good part or a bad part. They'll like a good part, but if they're going to get paid for it, they'll do it. This explains a lot. It explains probably half of Peter O'Toole's filmography. What the Urini wasn't doing the uh, those. Um 15-minute Sherlock Holmes cartoon movies for. Um... I wasn't even thinking of that. Okay. Okay, so we do need to have one argument before we close this up. Well, We've had one argument. We've no, had no, several no, arguments. We have to have a new one. And it, it, not, it doesn't have to be actually a recorded argument. Theme music. Single. Theme music. Last time we used the music with the theremin and the thing. From Scared to Death. Yeah. Which I thought was fine. What, what did you think? You should use the opening theme from Lost. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, Steve lives in, in, in abject terror of copyright infringement. Oh, well, right. I think in the, ca the case of the film that we're talking about, well, I get scared to death. I think there are fine. 20 different people selling copies of it on Amazon. Well, it's also on the it's also on archive.org, which means that it's had. I mean, its rights are probably. I Come mean, to yeah. the films are probably. To the did, film you, did you check the uh, other movie I told you about? I couldn't find a copy of it that was had, had decent enough audio. Oh, okay. Good. There's a couple. Of, there are a couple that have the intro that I was able to find, but it just was too weird. It was just too tinny sounding. I couldn't use it. Well, but that's the charm. And if we can get those seventy eights to work, you want to talk about tinny sounding? Ha ha ha! I can give you something from the soundtrack of Benjamin Siddlegrass and the Cauldron of Penguins. See, we got that. There you go. That's that's. I personally, I still like eighteen thirty two. I like. I am it. not going to talk about that on microphone. It's a friend of Justin's. I'm not going to say anything. So Which by itself, that? I said something. Was that the what the theme for the first season? Yes. I was not a fan. I just I just knew that whenever it was whenever I heard the I knew that Elitist Bastards was starting, and I liked that. Well, well because it kept the coming. Piece and you'll know that it, you know in a couple episodes you'll know random that it's, moments and I, I, it's on my iPod. I'm just saying, just saying. All right. I'm so, hungry. I'm, yeah, I'm pretty So, so thanks everybody for listening to episode two of season two of the latest Bastards Get the Movie. Volume two. Volume two. Episode two, two. volume two, season two. I feel like we went Series two. two. Can I get my money now? The next generation. We're not paying you. We're going to feed you. Feed me. Feed me. Get mad.